a lot of support. Uh, Bernie has a lot of strong support in these next legs of the race. Uh, you say that with you, voters don't have to choose between a revolution and the establishment. So only 4%, though, of Bernie's backers say you'd be their second choice candidate. Only 4%. And we know how the Bernie bros are. Um, how are you going to convince them you're enough of the revolution they might be looking for? Well, my message is that I would be the most progressive president we've had in a half century, and that this is personal for me. Look, a, a lot of this frustration is based on the failure of the economy and the political system we have to really speak to uh, so many people who uh, look at this president saying, hey, the economy's great, just look at the stock market, and they're thinking, mm -hmm. okay, but what about, what about my neighborhood? What about my kitchen table? And, and that's all great, but we're, we're counting the wrong things right now. When I'm president, we're not going to measure the performance of the economy by the stock market. We're going to measure it by the income growth of the 90%. A good economy is one that's working for all of us. Well, but, you know, Bernie's talking about free education. I mean, it seems to right. me like young people are in debt. They're in tremendous right. debt. And he's speaking their language. <laughs> and I'm offering a way to solve those problems and at the same time, leave our country less polarized and divided than it is now. Look, look at where we are as a country. I mean, it is, it is frightening how divided this country is. At the very moment when actually, remarkably, even though you wouldn't know it looking on the floor of the Senate, there is an American majority right now that wants these things to happen. Even in conservative right. states, a majority want to see a higher minimum wage, want to see paid family leave, uh, uh, support no matter how you feel about the issue personally, uh, support uh, a woman's right to choose, support uh, doing something about climate, acting on gun violence. These are positions that we can bring Americans together around. And why, at that moment, would you want to blow up that majority? Healthcare. We, we yeah. could make, my plan will make sure there's no such thing as an uninsured American. The difference is just I don't think we should force everybody onto the public plan, because I think if I'm right, uh, and, and if, if we progressives are right that, uh, that that plan will be the best one, everybody will pick it anyway. And if we're wrong a little bit, we're going to be really glad we didn't kick people off their old plan. So it just puts a little humility Good. into the policy. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying we ought to do. And that's something I think most folks, certainly progressives and independents, and, and we're seeing how many independents and even what I like to call future former Republicans uh, are <laughs> coming to our events and supporting us, which is exactly how we're going to win. Remember, it's not enough to just <coughs> club people over the head and hope that, that we get just just by a little bit managed to get this president out, we got to win big enough that we send not only Trump, but Trumpism into the history mm -hmm. books and send out shockwaves big enough to finally reunite Senate Republicans with their conscience. Mm -hmm. you and I think you're a really interesting politician Britt Hume said that you are the most talented politician come up and rising I agree with him um, and I actually think you understand the middle of the country probably because of where you're from so I was really surprised I saw an interview you did on a radio show where you were talking about abortion mm -hmm. and I think this got a lot of play in conservative media and conservative circles where you were talking about and this is your quote there's a lot of parts of the Bible that talk about how life begins with breath so even that is something we can interpret differently it obviously in my circles was passed around everywhere because I think the interpretation from pro-life people like me was that you meant a baby actually being born and then possible, you know, there's a lot of controversy with um, Governor Northam and what it means and what, what time a woman should be able to have an abortion. I just wanted you to clarify because I found that statement to be pretty radical. Well, I, I'm just pointing to the fact that uh, different people will interpret their own moral lights and for that matter interpret scripture differently. But we live in a country where it is extremely important that no one person have to be subjected to some other person's interpretation of their own religion. I, I know think, we're not um, going to agree. Partial birth abortion is something that was coming up in, in, like I said, Governor Northam. It was a huge controversy when he was running for governor. I, I think people, even Democrats, and there are a lot of pro-life Democrats in the country, want to know exactly where your line is, because you will be the president if you win. Right, but my point is that it shouldn't be up to a government official to draw the line. It should be up to the woman who's confronted with the choice. Infanticide after a baby was born, you'd be comfortable. Does anybody with that. seriously think that's what these I, cases I are think about? That think there think are about the situation. That, yes. if, you're, if this is a late term situation, mm -hmm. then by definition, it's one where a woman was expecting to carry the pregnancy to term. Then she gets the most perhaps devastating news of her life. We're talking about families that, that may have picked out a name, maybe assembling a crib, and they learn something excruciating and are faced with this terrible choice. 
And I don't know what to tell them uh, morally about what they should do. I just know that I, I trust her and her decision medically or morally isn't going to be any better because the government is commanding her to do it in a certain way. I respect way. that. Yeah. Um, just to put a peg on this, I respect what you're saying because you didn't back down from it. This is going to hurt you in the middle of the country with the Republicans you're trying to win over. People like me, this is a hard line. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, that question, that answer is just mm -hmm. pretty, you're just as radical as I thought it was.